All right, guys, so welcome back to Capital MPS News. Today, we're going to build a budget high-end build. So I know it's going to sound a bit pricey, but it's actually not. The bare bone for this PC is basically made up of this RTX 3090 Founders, this i9 12900K, and this motherboard, G690 Gigabyte Gaming X. And basically, those alone add up to 1,500 euros, which seems a lot, but it's actually very little for the kind of performance that we're gonna get. It's gonna be a 4K capable gaming PC, very high refresh. And now basically, the rest of the components was actually sent to us. So let's go quickly over what we've got. So we have two main brands, and it is Netac coming in clutch with their new Shadow RGB RAM. This is 4800 MHz DDR5, 16 gigabyte by two. And then we have their PCIe 4.0 SSD. And now this one, they promise, it's going at 7,000 megabytes per second. And if it's true, it's a lot, guys. It's really fast. And then we also have Deepcool. Deepcool sent us all the fans, their latest 360mm LS720, only one AIO. And then we also got their 850 watt power supply. And the case is also from Deepcool. So now we will just unbox everything and get everything ready and done for the build. Okay, so I wanna spend an extra couple of minutes talking about these components which I managed to get for such a good price. Now, the motherboard and the CPU, I actually bought them on Amazon warehouse deals. So they come without box because the 1200K has a very good box, but it's not included. And uh, this Gigabyte motherboard comes without accessories, without anything except the original box in a very poor condition. But they actually come with one year warranty. And if they don't work, you can just send them back. So I do recommend you go with this route. But for the GPU, I actually just straight up bought it from a person I knew. Well, actually from someone random on the internet. But I made sure it had some warranty. So this GPU it has around one and a half year of warranty. So you can be sure that there's going to be no problems. So again, this is what really makes the build. Because the rest of the components, you can just get them all new, get them all more budget, get them all used. It doesn't really impact the pricing. But this here is what gets the build to be good. Getting the main components at a good price. I recommend going used or open box. I think it's the best way to go about it. Okay, so let's unbox the case. Okay, so we've seen the CK560 from Deepcool, very gorgeous case. Now let's see what other things we have. Let's start from the LS720, the only one they sent us. Now first are the fans. They all have proprietary connectors. And then we got the actual all-in-one cooler and the block is gorgeous, guys. Well, the fans are the same fans, clearly. So we'll just talk about them once they're properly mounted. But the power supply, guys, this is their new series. I will just show it to you. Now, something which I cannot show you, but I wish I could, is just how heavy their PQ850M is. If you feel it like a power supply, the heavier it is, the better. This one is really heavy. Plus, it has this grill front, which I really like personally. And it's fully modular, 80 plus gold, and it has 840 watts on the 12 volt lines. Very good power supply. And now I will show you the cables quickly. They basically are some flat black cables. So they go with pretty much everything. They never look like stunning, but they always look clean. Deep Cool's choice, we'll see how they look inside here. Oh, and by the way, Deep Cool also includes their own power supply testing, so you can actually connect it and make sure that the power supply is working before powering on your components. And this is it for what Deep Cool sent us. Now let's cut to Meta. Okay, so here we are slapping this i9 12900K. Nice time for the RAM. And it's already starting to look pretty. Now here we have a bit of a, it's not really a problem, but something you have to think about. So most motherboards have a heatsink. Now this SSD has its own heatsink, so it doesn't need this one. So we have to decide if we want to just get rid of this or try to make them both fit without breaking everything. Okay, so we actually went uh, with the single SSD without this one on top because this one is much thicker and we'll just leave this one on the box, run it like this. Okay, so the mounting procedure is pretty standard, but they have uh, the socket engraved over here. So we just slap the 1700s on here, which have the right measurement. 
Okay, so we're actually slapping the cooler in and we decided we want to mount it on the front of the case So we're going with this orientation for the cables and it's pretty straightforward. Everything is in the manual Okay, so at this point you really should just go ahead and test everything You know, just slap the GPU on top of it, plug it in half a second Just make sure it's working, but we will not do that because I like risks. So let's get going Okay, so due to the case fan being a bit too quick maybe. Now let's go to the front. Now the front in this case is really interesting actually. But you have this one which is magnetic then you have the dust filter you can finally access the fans now the fans out of the box are all cable managed you know it's not really the best idea to get them off but we will have to so let's get started This thing is fantastic guys, <laughs> took me 3 seconds. Okay, so it's finally time to actually slap everything into it. Okay, this one already has the IO shield. To actually mount the fans, we're gonna have to put these ones on the front, daisy chain them, and then actually screw them in through with the screws. So it's gonna be a bit tricky, but nothing we can't handle. Okay, so the best part about having proprietary fan and sync the speed and be controlled by the actual all-in-one cooler, which is really nice. Okay, let's slap the power supply in very gently, of course. Okay, so we slotted the power supply in, now it's time to screw it up and to actually connect all the cables. Okay, so the part everybody was waiting for, the slotting in of the GPU. Alright guys, so the build is basically finished. Okay guys, so as you can see we have it working we still have to sync up all the fans But here's a sneak peek to how it looks like in the inside I'm liking it so far. Alright guys, so here we are with the PC build and well first of all Let me know if you like how it looks aesthetically But let's get straight into the performance and the overall build quality and experience now first of all performance It's just amazing. I mean just looking at the fire strike score. I think is enough <laughs> There's really not much to say the 3090 is an insanely good card And I think now that the prices have come down to the point where you can buy one for 800 euros or 800 dollars You can actually get them for 700 750 euros. I think if you're you're going to get a high-end PC get this it's gonna be the absolute best value for money you can get on the high end right now and same goes for the 12900k now I was pretty lucky and I actually found it new close but even if you buy a used one like there's really no problem at all and it performs fantastically I mean it maxes out everything at every resolution to work just look at the CPU Z performance it gets like 12k in combined it's much more than the previous gen I think with 12th and 13th gen with LGA 17 
Android in general, Intel really made a leap in terms of performance gains. Uh, it's insane. Now, let's discuss a bit overclocking. So the graphic card, even in a build this good, I still run it undervolted. Now, I do have a ton of tutorials on my channel about undervolting. It's what I do uh, the most. So you can go check it out for the 1390 specifically. But by running it undervolted, you basically reduce the power draw by close to 100 watts for the same performance, actually a bit more performance depending on how you clock it. So I'm extremely impressed with it. And I think the founders is actually really good. It's extremely quiet. It does run a bit hotter, maybe 5% slower at stock but it runs so quiet and you can actually get that performance back with a bit of manual tuning. So this is about the core of the build. But now let's discuss, for example, the RAM. Aside from the looks, which I mean, to me, it looks gorgeous. It performs really well. I think NetHack have done a very good job even on this, which is their entry level kit at 4800 megahertz. It does go faster than DDR4. The difference is there, I cannot read easily. But what's the most impressive in terms of absolutes is the SSD. I mean, I've never seen, I had never ever seen an NVMe SSD reaching 8,000 megabytes per second in crystal disk mark. I mean, that's insanely good. The Windows installation was extremely quick. Installing game is, takes an instant, just already installed. I think the NetHack SSD, probably the best product SSD-wise I've tried so far. I think it beat Samsung. It's insanely good. 10 out of 10 I would recommend, especially for the price. Let's get into the case. I think, honestly, like the build quality on this deep cool case, it's really good. And I think this front case, was actually a very good idea because they managed to mix good aesthetic but while having the airflow of pretty much a mesh panel and while still putting the dust filter under it. I think it's really smart plus I really like how it's magnetic. I think the case is pretty compact. There's not much to say about the cooler. I think it cools really nice. I will show you the temperature but I mean, this PC runs quiet and cool all the time. And regarding the power supply, well, I mean, once you get an 80 plus gold modular power supply, really, if you get it from a good brand like Deepcool, there's not much else to say. You will know it goes well. Plus, just when I unboxed it, again, by feeling how much it weighed, I knew it was a good product. So I'm very impressed with that one as well. And I think overall, it's very well matched. I'm really happy about how it came. Honestly, I would not change anything, aside from the fact that the initial 700K that we got was broken, but we managed to get a replacement and I also managed to get it new, not used. So that's really good. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the results, but let me know your opinion and thoughts down below. What do you think? Do you think it's a good deal? Do you think it's too powerful? Do you think I could have done something different for the same budget? Let me know and see you in the next one, guys. Bye.